do I have a pointer? So at the westernmost edge is the North Spreader Waterway. One button is the laser and the other destroys the world. So, <laughs> do, you, do you know which one it is? Cool. No <laughs> I'm just going to wing it. So the, the westernmost body of water is the North Spreader Waterway. The seven islands are the property just to the east of it. All right, so this is the North Spreader Waterway. These are the seven islands. And incidentally, they're not really islands, they're more peninsulas because there is a piece of property that connects it to the property adjacent to Old Burnstow Road. So North Spreader Waterway, the seven islands, Serena Vista Park is down here somewhere. Um, this is Tropicana Parkway West. This is West Cape Estates. And this is Tropicana Park. And actually, this portion of Tropicana Park West will have to be vacated or eliminated so that this entire property will be Tropicana Park. So, I, you know, I know there's a lot of new people here that may not be intimately familiar with the geography. That's where Tropicana Park is located. Um, these two diagrams are essentially um, a depiction of the two promises that were made. So the, the diagram at the top, again, bigger beach, and I'm not saying whether the beach is important or not, it's just a geographic feature to help identify what is the original concept design and what is the design that essentially was promised to the rowing club and to the kayak club. And there actually are quite a, quite a few differences in this park design if you spend a lot of time looking at it, but you know, I, I think the important thing is there are differences. I don't want to get wrapped around size of beach or size of parking lot or any of that other stuff. What's important is this is what the residents thought they were getting. This is what the kayak club and the rowing club thought they were getting. And actually, you know, specifically in the southeast corner, these are the two parcels that would be leased out to the two clubs. And that lease has not reached city council yet, but what has reached city council and has been approved is this park design or this layout design. So on November 26th, of 2019, this design went away and it was replaced by this design. And, and it's that simple. Now it's, it's complicated to solve, but it's really that simple. So the, the, um, the steps that happened or the things that happened. Um, I went to the public input, let me back up. I actually went to the public education session on the Parks Go Bond in September of 2018 at uh, Oasis. And Parks and Rec was there, the mayor was there, uh, the city manager was there. And what was discussed was a concept for Tropicana Park that looked like the diagram at the top. And I, I, I kind of remembered it, you know, not the specific details, but I just had an idea of sort of what the thing looked like, right? And then it, shortly thereafter, that diagram appeared on the website for the city. And it also really appeared at 
Krista McAuliffe School. There was a public input meeting at Krista McAuliffe School where residents had a chance to weigh in on park design. Can you go back to the two, to the two slides again, please? Now, at Krista McAuliffe, and some of you may have even been there, so I, I, there's some faces in here that I recognize. At Krista McAuliffe, the plan for the park that was shown was this one. And there was a note added to the diagram right here, and that note said potential kayak club and rowing club location. Those were the words. Now, when I, when I looked at that, I said, that's the same design that I've seen since November of, or September of 2018. The only difference was there was a note that was added, and I didn't see the note, but it, it was it, this, there was a note and there was something shown in Krista McAuliffe that indicated that the city was working on um, a lease agreement, you know, a potential lease agreement for the kayak club and the rowing club. Okay, so when, when um, and I actually worked with Parks and Rec, worked with Michael Chisholm, and at some point in time, Michael sent me a diagram that showed what was going to be presented to city council. Can you go back again? This is the diagram that the city sent me. And right away I noticed that it wasn't the same design. So I sent out a bulletin. Wow, that's not good. I sent out a bulletin to the NWNA and I said, and these are the exact words, the plans that were shown at Krista McAuliffe were not accurate. They don't reflect the actual plans for the park. And that's true, because that was shown at Krista McAuliffe and that doesn't reflect the actual plans that were shown for the park. Now, I'm not weighing in on what's right or wrong. I'm just telling you, that's the reason that I sent out the bulletin. And in the bulletin that I sent out, I asked for public input. Tell me what you think. And I got a lot of feedback, a lot of public input. And public input had not yet been received on this design. And it was ready to go to city council for approval without any public input. So I took it upon myself to send out a bulletin and ask for input. And based on that input, and based on some of the research that I had done, these are the things that I found to be a problem with the process and with the design. So if you can go to the next one, and I won't, I won't ask you to go back again. <laughs> so these are the things that, that I saw and the things that you told me about when you gave me input on park design. Uh, the first was, I saw right away that there wasn't transparency, that we didn't see the design of the park. I was concerned about the safety of all boaters. Now, that's not a showstopper, by the way, because the North Spreader, like any waterway in Cape Coral, is public access. Anybody can use it at any time. Just like Tropicana Park is a public park, anybody can use it at any time. Anybody can use the amenities are there. But I was just concerned, because of where I live, that there may have been some safety issues as we introduce more traffic into the Spreader. And it was as much about the growth in Cape Coral as it was about the introduction of additional um, paddlers or rowers and kayakers. And you know that there are additional um, non-motorized water sports, and I don't know if that's the right terminology, being introduced now, right? There's a, a, a club out of Charlotte Harbor that puts in at the Burn Store Marina, or Burn Store Boat Ramp, I should say, sorry. So there's a lot, a lot going on in the spreader, and, and you know I would just like to make sure that somebody's looking at it. Um, 
The issue of unrestricted access was raised by a lot of people who gave me feedback, and what they mean by that is, in the case of the water, the, the, uh, the North Spreader waterway is the only way out. So unlike the South Spreader or South Spreader waterway, which has several ways out, if you live north of Pine Island Road and you're in that water system, that brackish water system, you can only get out by going south. And as additional homes are built in the north and there's a there's a you know a lot of building happening in the north, the concern on access simply is how are we all going to share that properly? You know? Boaters have as much right to use it as rowers and kayakers and jet skiers. You know, we're all in this together. How are we gonna all share it? So I'm, I was asking, how is somebody going to address that? I actually found that there is an issue, I, I believe there's an issue of the Florida State statutes and the use of funds. That is using, it's uh, section 10, article seven of the Florida State statutes, with, which has to do with how a municipality supports a non-public entity, how those monies are used. and. I'm not a lawyer or an attorney, so the first thing I did was ask people that I have respect for and think that they may know what's going on. And the, the response that I pretty much received is, yeah, it's something that should be considered. Not, it's not a, a showstopper, it's not a slam dunk, but it's something that should be considered. And the last one is fit into the neighborhood. Um, And I'm going to take the taxpayer, me as a taxpayer. I've never been told what the plans are for Tropicana Park. I've never been told what will be built there. Um, will it just be fenced storage areas? Will it be a great big aquatic center? Will it? I I don't know. But what I what I do know is that whatever goes there needs to fit in the neighborhood, like. Everything else needs to fit in whatever neighborhood it's in. That, you know, the purpose of zoning, by the way, is to segregate incompatible uses. That's why we have zoning laws. That's why we have land development code. To segregate incompatible uses. That's why you see ordinances that say you can only do this, on this in this particular zoning district. So the fit in the neighborhood issue is not a NIMBY issue. It is a, we all have to play by the same rules. If the city is going to develop something in a public park, it needs to, whatever is going to be developed, needs to conform to all of the ordinances, the codes, and all the land development codes that are applicable. So I know we have a lot of people here tonight. Um, and that, that's a good thing. You know, you don't resolve issues like this unless you talk about it, and you don't resolve issues unless you get public input on them, so that's what this is. But what I would ask is that you just kind of let us get through the rest of the items, and they will be very quick. And then we're just gonna open it up to general discussion. And anybody that wants to make a comment about anything that I've said, or anything that, you know, if I misspoke about some point here, I would be, I certainly would like to know. Okay? So that, that concludes, yeah, Rick. Mm -hmm. Why well, you got the slide up? Can I get the city side on that, please? Can you wait until we get through the rest of it? I'll, I'll give you the, I'll give you the time. All right. Because I, I think it's going to just open it all up, so not a problem. And I appreciate you being here because you have more information than most of us have. All right, so um, we're gonna move on to the UEP update, and I'm gonna introduce Dennis Winchester, who is the Vice President.